Hey guys, and welcome to this video. In this one, I want to present you what I've been working on this week. So, spoiler, I've mainly been working on my latest course as to know, uh, Sandy Blast, because I really like that simulation and I thought that I would be able to make it way better, like, like in an actual game, not just a simulation. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about here is the addition of goals. To manage that, we've got a goal manager. We also have four goals for now. For now, I just don't instantiate the goal containers. I've just set up four goal containers and whatever the level needs, we're going to use uh, some of them and disable the other ones. Okay, so a goal container is quite simple. You just have a basic sprite that is the container, some sound that we can color depending on the color of the goal with we, we have. And uh, we also have an amount right here. And as you can see in this video, whenever we complete a line, I uh, like from left to right or right to left, the particles jump to the goal container. And this effect is also quite cool. I'm quite proud of this one. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie here. So let me explain how it works. By the way, if you enjoy my courses and my teaching, Mobile Mastery is back, let's go! <laughs> so uh, for those of you who don't know, Mobile Mastery is, an co is a compilation or a bundle of all of my courses for one price. And for that price, which is 150 bucks, you get all of my courses, so the current courses and the future courses. So anytime I release a new course, you'll get it for free. I invite you to go check out tabseal.com and for one week, you can use the code Y2025 for 30% off. This is a launch discount just for you. Let's go. If you already own some of my courses, there is an additional discount. So I just feel free to send me an email at tabsealgames at gmail.com. Let's jump back to our sound simulation. Whenever we complete a line from side to side, so let me try and complete one really quickly. Oh, come on. Um, I need the red one here because uh, that's a goal. Uh, boom, okay. I'm gonna do that really quickly. Maybe I can time-lapse this. Okay, here we go. So I'm just going to um, try and drop it from somewhere around here and hit pause really quickly. Oh, okay, so. What do we have in here? We've got our sound simulation with a sound particle effect. So we've spawned a particle particle effect, sorry, for these sound particles. But how did we spawn it? Whenever we complete a line from right to left or left to right again, we try and spawn or generate a sprite from the color that we want to collect. So as you can see, we've got some sprite holders right here. This is one of them. I think that's the last one, yeah. Here is our sprite. So from the basic sprite or the sun simulation, we've generated this sprite. Then in our particle effect, we spawn one particle for each pixel in this sprite. And afterwards, we can handle them or control them however we want. So we can simulate this nice effect. Perfect. And whenever one of them reaches the container, we can decrement uh, the container. That triggers the level complete. Awesome. I'm sure there are ways to improve this, but I'm already definitely proud of this. And yeah, I can definitely improve that later on. For now, I just want to get the systems working properly. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is power-ups. We've got three power-ups. The first one is a freeze power-up that can freeze the timer. Uh, by the way, there is a timer now. Yay! <laughs> so yeah, we can freeze the timer for a certain amount of time. And that amount of time is configurable right here. N not right here, but right here, the freeze duration. The power-up system that I've uh, made right here is super versatile and generic. We can use it to create a variety of power-ups, and I'm actually thinking about turning this into a package of its own. As you can see, the power-up manager is only about 180 lines long because, yeah, the power-ups are super generic. We've got some abstraction, we've got some scriptable objects and interfaces that make the system super handy to use and, again, reusable. So I've shown you the first um, power-up. Let me show you the second one, my, my favorite one, okay? So let's use this one and... Scud. And... Skadoosh. <laughs> okay, so there are still some improvements. Of course, we need to um, destroy that thing at the bar at the top. So whenever we click, boom, one of the shapes here gets turned into a dynamite. We can grab it like an actual shape and drop it. Skadoosh. <laughs> 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 
awesome. This is so cool, guys. I really love that effect. Uh, same thing here. Whenever we drop the dynamite... Oh, come on. Uh, I'm a bit too late, but that's okay. I can still show you. We've got a sprite again that is generated depending on um, the pixels that will be affected by the dynamite. Then, once again, we spawn a particle effect, which should be... Uh, I don't remember where... Oh, right here? Yeah, this one. We spawn another particle effect with these particles, and it's another effect. It's not the same particle effect that we've used to collect our uh, sound particles, but yeah. Now we just use gravity and explode everything. Boom. Skadoosh. Uh, the third one. So the third one, maybe I can remove this. For the third power-up, what I've decided to do is quite like the original game, actually. Mm, not gonna lie here. So we've got a target. You can select a color to remove it. So the implementation is not uh, working right now, but yeah, I, I can show you that because I've used a nice shine shader. I've created it from scratch right here. Uh, it might seem complicated, but it's not. Actually, there are a bunch of stuff that we can remove right here. Boom. <laughs> that makes it uh, way easier to understand now. But yeah, we've got a rectangle. We just use a modulo to repeat the rectangle. We rotate it a bit and we add that color or that shine to the actual color. For this last power-up, I must admit that I had an issue first. What I had done is whenever we click on the power-up, again, we generate sprites for each of the colors here. Uh, we should have these sprites right here. So here is the sprite for the red color, the um, green color, and the blue color. So at first, I had generated a polygon collider using Unity's basic implementation. So if we remove uh, this, uh, first off, just keep that collider in mind. You see, it tries to clearly follow the lines of our sprite. But you can also see the selectable outline right here. Let me just double click. Yeah, that's way better. You can also see this orange outline. This is the shape of the original collider Unity had made. And to demonstrate this, we can just remove this remove the Polygon Collider and add a new Polygon Collider. There you go. So as you can see, the shape is not optimal at all. It's quite big. And unfortunately, we can't use the um, generated physics shape from Unity because this is a kind of procedural sprite. So what I've done is used a flood fill algorithm along with a contour tracing algorithm that I'm going to try and First off, understand a bit more, not gonna lie. And then I'm gonna try and explain that to you so that you can do or apply the same effects. This is quite important in our case. Same thing for the dynamite. We need a contour to detect whenever we collide with something, okay? So yeah, look at the differences here. Now here it's following the contour, even though even if we've got multiple paths or multiple kind of colliders for one sprite, uh, same thing for the red color and not the case for this one. And why is it important? Because our, uh, oh, come on, I've lost. <laughs> Let's try again. Because uh, our power up right here, let me just, ah, let me just do this quite quickly. Yeah, this should do. So let's use it again. For this detection right here, we are using raycasts. So I'm gonna do this, okay. And to use raycasts, we need to try and match the shape as best as we can. Otherwise, let me just uh, select these, remove the sprite uh, to polygon collider. Let's add a basic polygon collider. And as you can see, even though I'm right now on the blue color, it's trying to select the green color because the collider is overlapping uh, the blue one, which is really bad. And this is why we need an accurate polygon collider detection. So yeah, these are the things that I've been working on this week. I hope that you found that interesting. And yeah, if that's the case, you can leave a comment to let me know if you want to learn about these things. I might add that to the course.